Gentleman yields back. Are there others who seek in recognition? Mr. Tierney, you are recognized. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, this would be laughable if it wasn't so sad. Uh, you know, we have in front of us today you know, a bill which is basically an attack on organized labor, any chance for American men and women who work for a living to try to organize to preserve their rights. Uh, we have a situation where so many people are out of work. We all sound like a bunch of bean counters, like a bunch of CPAs, no offense to them. Uh, but we talk about the Office of Management and Budget, OMB. We talk about GBO. We talk about CBO. We talk about all of that except for the things that matter to the American men and women who are out of work and their families. Uh, we don't talk about the inequity of the situation, the, what a small percentage of Americans, 1 percent, own such a large percent of all the income and all the assets in this country. We don't talk about the unfairness of corporations going without paying any taxes at all. In, in the instance of at least one corporation I'm intimately aware with no taxes in 2008, 9 or 10 and a $4.2 billion refund. Uh, we talk about not eliminating even special favors for those corporations, the so-called tax expenditures. Uh, we talk about the, the immorality of all people having such an overhang of debt on their house mortgages and on their credit cards. Um, and they all they hear Congress talk about is ideology. Oh, we're going to shut down the EPA. We're going to shut down the Navy Relations uh, Board. Uh, we're going to, you know, all of this stuff about regulations. Well, Mr. Anders is right. We all went out uh, to our district, as we normally do, speak to hundreds of businesses, thousands nationwide. But I can tell you the, uh, the many that I've spoken to in my district, they're not concerned that the EPA is, is the problem. They're not concerned that the National Labor Relations Act is the problem. The problem for them is they don't have any customers. And there's nothing that Mr. Rowe just stated is going to create a single customer now for them. That's what the small businesses want. They understand that when you lay off the hundreds of thousands of teachers that the negligence and the inaction of this Congress has allowed to happen, that's hundreds of thousands of customers that they don't have. They understand when teachers and firefighters and police officers aren't working, they're not going into the hardware store, the clothing store, the restaurants to spend their money. If that's the case, then small business people can't be hiring because they have an uncertainty of where their business is going to come from. And they are disgusted with the ideological war that's going on down here and things that to them are utter nonsense in the list of how it impacts their life and gets the economy going again. Um, they talk about us and 9 percent is probably high, as Mr. Andrews says, because what are we saying down here? We deal with a bill like this, National Labor Relations Act. Uh, we try to strip it of its meaning to people. We try to, we forget, we do damage and violence to the original intent of the act. You know, we originally was put in, you know, Senator Wagner made some very clear statements about how the situation then was much as it is today. Uh, people are caught, and he framed it, a labyrinth of modern industrialism dwarfed by the size of corporate enterprise where the worker can attain freedom and dignity only uh, if they work with others in their group. Every page of every treaties that we sign with other countries talks about the right of people to organize and to bargain collectively. And we insist on that in other countries if we're going to deal with them. Yet we spend time in this Congress trying to destroy that right through delay and through inaction. It's been the platform of every political party until recently. Now it's the platform of the Democratic Party, but the Republicans have walked away from organized labor. They spend their time being corporate apologists, trying to do away with the last vestiges of any protection that the American working men and women even had. Um, this is, as Senator Wagner said, the heart of the struggle for the preservation of political as well as economic democracy in America. And this whole thing about having labor protections was to dealing with the worker as a free man. But that doesn't seem to be what's important uh, in this venture. He talked about the wage earner's share in the product created by manufacturing declining steadily for a period of time. Well, our wages for working men and women are stagnant. And as I said, the top 1 percent, the CEOs, the heavy investors, they're making an awful lot and other people's wages are stagnant. And so his arguments then reflect the arguments of what is going on here today. Uh, we need to get off of the ideology and onto some real action. We have proposals. Mr. Rowe's comments of what he proposes as jobs bills are not creating any jobs. Uh, allowing cement factories to spew as, as much mercury as they want in the air is not going to create jobs. Cement factories aren't going to relocate in China if that doesn't go through. Shutting down the EPA may have pollution problems and health problems, certainly not going to put people to work. Uh, you go on and on through that list of 15 or whatever it is that Dr. Rose said. The list that we have puts people to work. The idea of making an investment in this country of things that have to be done anyway for our roads and our bridges, our air traffic control systems, uh, our water facilities. Those are investments that have to be made. Why not make them now when there's a, an abundance of capital and too many people out of work, when you'll never get money as cheap as you'll get it now? When will any developing nation 
ever have the opportunity to redevelop at such a low cost as we do right now? Why aren't we focusing on putting people to work and creating those customers? Why aren't we talking about the President's jobs proposals instead of dealing with this nonsense of attacking the National Labor's, uh, Labor Relations Board? I yield back. The gentleman's time has expired.